greetings and salutations from a Christian viewpoint. I know uh, that uh, people watching the videos have had, uh, I think, many painstaking nights probably reviewing the uh, knowledge or what we found from the scripture and what we're sharing with people because uh, the world that we live in is, is based on playing or engaging in a fiction. And therefore, we call that gaming. We call that gambling. The courts are called courts of chancery. They're dealing with debts of honor that Gentiles play in for wages uh, to play for gain or mammon or money in exchange for who they really are. They're not content with their spiritual being with God and therefore have been tricked or beguiled into a unbeliever's game that wagers on the unwary soul who enters into it. And therefore, we're going to look to the scripture uh, to find what I believe to be, from my research, the first gamble, the first bet uh, that was put forth by the first adversary against God, what was good, the one who tricked or beguiled Eve in the Garden of Eden to touch something that didn't belong to her, and at the same time, uh, engage man in a, a terrible dilemma that has placed the unwary who do not understand the Christian remedy that Christ came to be the second Adam, relief for all mankind. And so we're going to look at the book of Job. In the book of Job, deals with the first bet, the alphabet. In Job 1, starts off, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one in his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence thou, whence thou comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered thy servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God or not? Hath not thou made a hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking and wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job that said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I am only escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another that said, The fire God has fallen 
from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and thy servants, and consumed them. And only I am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men. And they are all, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down, fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Now we know that most people would never have experienced such a great calamity as Job. God allowed Satan to test him. We must remember it's not God testing, it's God allowing evil to test good. And therefore, even despite all these calamities, all the substance of what he had is material possessions, that Satan had challenged God, saying that if it was not for all these possessions, all this protection of all the good that he had, he would not serve God out of love. And therefore came the first bet. And it's easy enough, we'll just say in the code of English, we'll call it the alphabet, the first bet. And if we look at even the name Job, uh, Job actually is I-O-B, not J-O-B. It's kind of a codification. The English language uh, is an imperfect transliteration from the original Hebrew language. And so we uh, many times have letters that have been replaced. But the code is in the letters to tell us what it means in English, because certainly we would not pronounce Job in Hebrew the same as we're saying it in English. And therefore, I take the English language for my research to be a letter codification that each letter has a meaning. And if we don't know the letter and we don't know the meaning, we may not know the letter of the law that is being used in the rules of diction, in dictionary. And therefore, uh, when I researched the, the name Job, uh, meaning out of the English dictionary, official public business for private dishonest gain. Uh, the name Job in its original meaning was object of hostility, almost like war or contention. Persecuted one was another uh, definition of his name. And uh, when we look at I-O in the English language abbreviation for the letters is input output. Then the word B is uh, actually a second class, inferior to the best. So, in a sense, the IOB, or the job, uh, would actually be an input-output mathematical equation which would pay out to the inferior of the class based on the bet. And therefore, if we are working for wages or gain or mammon, which is contrary to Scripture. For the Scripture is clearly man cannot serve God in mammon or gain. He cannot serve money. He, he has to make a clear choice between which side is he going to be on. Is he going to be on his spiritual side in allegiance to God? Or is he willing to sell that in a suicide, go from unalienable to alienable, alien, where now there is a wager and a pledge placed. But God would not allow you to place your unalienable position in this wager because you still belong to God and he sent his son to purchase that, so that is paid. But the fictional end of the wager comes in where man's imagination comes in, where fiction, a lie, and therefore uh, illusionary or a made-up, make-believe wager comes in, especially operated by those that are unbelievers uh, of pagan beliefs, those who do not accept Christ as the covenant, and therefore are debtors. And that is why your surname that you need for business is in Roman law meaning a debtor. And a debtor is someone who owes, owes a debt of honor. 
And that is why in the courts of chancery, which we call our civil courts today, the courts of chancery are a gamble. So the law is like a lottery with the use of that name. And it's to find out whether or not you have dishonored the debt that you have taken on by pledging your allegiance into that surname. And therefore, to personally identify you in there, they need your consent with your God-given name to identify you as holding the wager so that they can hold you responsible for touching something that belongs to another. Therefore, you will call out on his name in the court and he will not hear you because the last thing that you have said is, I am a Gentile, pagan, even unbeliever, debtor. And therefore, God is not there at that moment because you have not accepted pardon. Therefore, you are walking in the sin of fiction. You have now wagered your life for money. And therefore, it is not out of character for the Bible to state the wages sin pays is death. Going further, um, we must really look at what is a debt of honor. Well, a debt of honor, according to the law dictionaries, is a gambling debt, not legally enforceable. Because it's a fiction, it's a lie. But if you are holding to that, it is not impossible for them to hold you to that debt. Because you're consenting to enforce the debt against yourself. You are saying you are now a fiction, which is a lie, and God hates liars. And we know who the father of the lie is, which is Satan. And we know the Romans based their whole society based on fictions and lies. Their, their whole uh, society was based on the idea of romance, which was to mix truth and fiction together, uh, stories of love and stories of war. And so when you engage in their fiction, you are now under the rule of law, which is really the, uh, the laws that govern war, engagement in war. So the rule of law is really a profession of being under the rule of arms or armed conflict, feuds between other people who are using these values or these surnames which are not invaluable but a set value that is being gambled and waged on and that's why people work for wages and that is why a hireling is called a prostitute someone who sells their body for money and that is why lawyers are solicitors and they govern that and they lead up to all the tithing under that system where people collect royalties that are pagans in a wagering game to see how many times you're going to touch property that does not belong to you that they hold as feudal lords to collect royalties and therefore if you're using those things you are subject to their authority and therefore using property doesn't belong to you requires a license license to per is permission to break the law and therefore you're considered to be a criminal a crooked a cursive lawbreaker someone who will curse himself by signing on and denying his unalienable side gifted by God to enter into a wager, a gamble that Satan challenged God at the beginning on Job, who said that he would not serve God out of love. The Bible was clear, owe no man anything but to love, but certainly that scripture also was in relation to understanding that those that were under Roman bondage were not told by Christians to not honor their debts because if they were claiming to be debtors, they were registered in as traitors in that debt, then they were responsible to owe Caesar for what he was in control of, which was the object of that surname or that registration that identified those that belonged to his jurisdiction. But in order to be Christ's disciple, you had to relinquish that. Christ was very, very definite in what he said in Luke 14 and 33. That you had to forsake what you had in the all, the common. And the wager is dealing with something that's in a common wager. And therefore you cannot be individually capable of salvation while you're in with a common aggregate. 
because you cannot make that decision for others. You can only make that decision of acceptance and what side you're on, whether you're on spiritual or whether you're on a material or temporal side. Whether you've chosen God or whether you've chosen Satan's side of material possessions that you would sell your soul for. And that is why it was very difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God because he was possessed by his possessions. Although all they represent is debt. And therefore, you will never generally find a content, wealthy man because there's never enough. And he's always worried and in anxiety of how to protect what he has that he has not realized is nothing more than debt and a burden. Look up the word last in law, it means burden. So your last name is the burden of proof, but they do not require the burden of proof in the court when you have said the last name. Therefore, they know who the debtor is, and they're waiting for someone to walk in and confirm the lie, because without it, they have nothing. Are you registered into the play on this? Well, we can take you further that the first bet would have happened when someone made an informed statement on you, a statement of claim. Therefore, this is where the bet begins. We'll call it a bid bond, where someone is doing something that spiritually is forbidden, but they are going to bid on you. It could go either way. You are either in the book of life or the book of death, but a child cannot make this decision. Therefore, the law protects the child during the first 18 years of his life, but after that, they're on their own. And the minute they make their first legal execution, they are now civilly dead, and they've now entered the wager, which leads next to the token. And now they must work off the debt. So everything that they touch is attached to a counterfeit value of what their life is. Instead of being invaluable, priceless as what Christ purchased, they've now been a commodity that is now traded amongst a very select few who control the trading capability of this. Your signatures do not occur on this. This is not your token. This is a token that belongs to people who sign on the line or sign below that name. You did not print these things and therefore they are not your things. And these things represent the Gentile nations. When you accept Christ, this certificate of debt is canceled. As is spoken of in Colossians, the Gideon Bible speaks of it as a certificate of debt. The King James Version says it is blotted out. All the debts, all the wagering that was placed against you is canceled out. All bets are off. Once you have now realized the difference between an act of God and an act of state. Which side are you on, what you will choose, was wagered on at your birth by people behind the scenes. But when you choose the right side, you owe nothing other than to love your fellow man and to walk as an ambassador for Christ, speaking such, talking as such, walking with a righteous position, speaking as an ambassador for Christ, not only on a video such as this, but to other people, you are obligated now to tell the gospel good news, the good news, the gospel truth, absolute factual truth, what is real, not what is fiction. Are you part of a fictional event that will lead you into the book of death, or are you in the book of life having accepted a completely hardened position that has no debt or attachment to it anymore? Do you walk in credit with Christ or do you walk with debt with the devil? We hope that this small video that we place today in this natural setting where God placed man in the beginning is where you will be because God's promise to all was that they would inherit the earth, the meek, the humble, those that accept that they are not surety for their sins. Only Christ could be that. Therefore, born again by this acceptance, usually done by water baptism, but it accepted and the Holy Spirit comes upon them, the original Spirit of God that breathed into Adam the breath of life at the beginning when he was perfect, immortal, 
before sin. In God's rest day, perfect, free from any defect. Are you part of a defect in the title? Do you carry a defect in your name to identify you as a defector from spirituality? Under the curse of the law of those who do not believe? Ask yourself this question. Go to, go to heartfelt prayer, for the pardon is awaiting all those that accept this. Then start to walk this. You must walk this truth, you must preach this truth, and you must tell others about it, and it requires your faith showing those works by talking to the government officials, letting them know what you are on and what you now have relinquished. But you must relinquish what is attached to sin and debt in order to do that, which is totally symbolic of the surname, debtor name that belongs to the Gentiles. You cannot play both sides. Thank you.